Hi, I'm Steve Sweeney. The video you're about to watch is the second in our Understanding Email series, tutorials that explain how email works. In today's video, we'll cover the applications that are used to send, receive, and read email. If you find this video useful, please visit our website, www.fsl.com, to access other software, documentation, and references that make administering email systems easier. So let's get started. The average user thinks the simple diagram above is pretty much how email works. I send mail from my computer to your computer. But the reality of what happens is a little more complex. The email process begins with a sender and the application they use to create and send the email. The technical name for the application is a mail user agent or MUA, also commonly called a mail tool. After the sender creates the message, the MUA then uses a protocol to forward the email to a mail hub. A protocol is simply an agreed upon methodology used to accomplish a task. The most commonly used protocol for sending email is the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP. We'll look at this protocol in detail in a later video. The mail hub is simply a computer that can both store and forward emails. To forward the email on to the recipient, the mail hub uses an application known as the MTA or Mail Transport Agent. The MTA also uses the SMTP protocol to forward the email on, possibly directly to the recipient if they use the same mail hub, or through gateways and the internet to the recipient's mail hub where the message is stored. The message is finally delivered when the recipient's mail tool contacts their mail hub and retrieves their messages using one of the POP IMAP or MAPI protocols. So to quickly review applications and protocols, the sender of an email uses an application known as the MUA or Mail User Agent to create and send an email off to a mail hub. The mail hub uses an application known as the MTA or Mail Transport Agent to receive, store if necessary, and then forward the email to the next hop on the way to its final destination, the recipient's mailbox. And finally, let's take a look at the most commonly used email client and server applications. Microsoft Outlook is the most commonly used email client with over a 25% market share. Outlook supports POP, IMAP, or MAPI protocols and can be used to connect to a Microsoft Exchange mail server or any other mail server that supports POP or IMAP. And that will cover almost any other email server. It's a very powerful email client, but with the power comes complexity and typically higher support costs. Thunderbird is a free open source cross-platform email and news client developed by the Mozilla Foundation. The basic version is not a personal information manager, although Mozilla Lightning extension adds PIM functionality. In fact, many additional features are available via other extensions. Power email users and users who read email on a variety of devices and operating systems should definitely consider using Thunderbird as their email client. Apple Mail provides a completely integrated mail client for Mac OS users. It's definitely the mail client of choice for most Apple users. However, Apple Mail does lack some of the more advanced features and extensions found in Thunderbird. Webmail clients today are the most popular email clients. Hotmail, Gmail, and Yahoo are used by over 28% of all email users and provide some advantages over traditional email clients. Typically they are free services. They are accessible from any computer or mobile device. They are very simple to use, reliable, and they are automatically backed up. So for a user with simple email needs, webmail might well be their first choice. But the workhorses of the internet are the email servers. It's been estimated that over 90% of all traffic on the internet today is email. So some of the busiest servers on the internet are email servers. And while there are many mail transport applications, the largest percentage of mail servers today are powered by SendMail, written by Eric Allman in the early 1980s. While SendMail supports a variety of mail transfer protocols, almost all of the email today is sent using the SMTP or ESMTP, the Extended Simple Mail Transport Protocol. SendMail is often considered to be a complex and difficult to configure application, but it is a very flexible and extendable program as evidenced by its over 30-year run as the leading MTA on the Internet. 
Postfix is a free and open source mail transfer agent. It is a popular and easier to administer alternative to the widely used SendMail. Exum was written in 1995 by Philip Hazel for use in the University of Cambridge Computing Services email systems. It's a free, fast, flexible, and highly configurable MTA and provides a good alternative to SendMail's complexities and PostFix simple configuration but limited flexibility. And last but not least is Microsoft's Exchange Server. Exchange is the server side of a collaborative client-server application developed by Microsoft. Exchange's major features consist of email, calendaring, contacts, and tasks that work with Microsoft Outlook on PCs and Macs. It also features wireless synchronization of email, calendar, and contacts with major mobile devices, as well as web browser-based access to its information and message store. It's a very complete but relatively expensive and complex application that requires an experienced support team. This concludes the second video in our Understanding Email series. We hope you found the video useful. If you have any comments or suggestions, we'd love to hear them. Please send them to comments at fsl.com. And please visit our website to access other videos in the Understanding Email series, as well as other information regarding administering email systems. And thanks for watching.